Hello, my name is Eric uh, with ANET Labs, and today we're going to start the journey of a creating a game that I have no idea what it's going to be. I have no graphics created. I have no idea in my head for what it'll be. Um, I'm going to pick one of the uh, presets for game uh, for game style from uh, from Buildbox. Um, and speaking of Buildbox, is the program I'm going to use today. Um, makes it super easy. They claim drag and drop. Uh, as easy as a PowerPoint drag and drop type interface to create your game and uh, it really is. Uh, this will be my uh, kind of like practice see how fast I can make a game game with BuildBox. So you can see here uh, my current version of one, is 1 1.3.5 and it has been since August. They haven't provided any updates. We're hoping for that any day and also BuildBox 2.0 is coming out so um, I'll probably do another video on that with another game once that comes out. But for now uh, we're going to get into this here. So you got your character, objects, and actions drop downs over here. I haven't added anything, so they're empty. Uh, once they populate, they'll also have a drop down like effects, which can be added to the uh, objects and characters to uh, give them some special effects. Logic will uh, really the only thing that they have is transform, and that will allow you to transform an object to direction, scale, uh, things like that. Labels, there you go. Um, you can add a font to the uh, to the screen and you can see over here what, what they are. You can also go into the font editor up here and change your font which uh, I'm sure I'll do later but for now just know it's there so we'll get into all this stuff later. For now we'll get into the settings, project settings and right now what we're really interested in is getting this set up for a game. Going into gameplay, you can see you have four walls here and you can change those walls by simply clicking on them. So you can see pass is the gray. If I had a character that was going to the left, he would continue pushing to the left and continue on the screen. If it was, if he tried to go to the right, it's not gonna allow him. It's gonna say, nope, you're stuck, you're blocked. And if he hits the bottom, he's gonna be defeated. So right now we'll just leave those as all pass and we're gonna pick a gameplay preset um, I've used a few of these, but today we'll just take the first one to create a game. Um, we'll do avoidance and <clears throat> excuse me, I've never done this one before, so this will be interesting. Um, I've never created an, uh, uh, an avoidance game. Uh, over here, once you go to the advanced gameplay settings, you can get the world settings and the character settings. On the character side, we can see just at a glance max speed 45 in the X direction. So if I slide this over, the X direction meaning left and right on the screen as we're looking at it and Y up and down. It's got very, very small 0 0.003 on the Y, um, which basically means it can't go up. X, fairly good speed left and right. No bouncing, no jumping. Um, let's see, no jumping, like I said. Leaning, zeros, rotation drags, 50, error. Kind of got to get in and play with these to actually understand what each of them mean. Um, I've dealt with all of these at length in one way or another trying to figure them out. Uh, the manuals aren't too great at it. It's really just a lot of trial and error. <clears throat> For the world side, these are basically which, how your world is to operate and how everything in your world were, were to operate. So if you make something a physics object, it's going to be uh, affected by the parameters that you put in here under your world settings. So uh, if it's a physics object and you have bounce set to 50 and it hits a ground object or a uh, uh, a fixed objects, it's going to bounce off of that, and so will your character. So will your character, um, speed, game, all this kind of stuff. Back delete threshold. This is one that gets people a lot of time. That's how much uh, of the screen can go backwards off of the screen from the direction it's heading. So it's going up now because of this little arrow we see on the game screen. So that's pointed up, which means back is going to be anything to the bottom here that goes off the screen towards the bottom, and that's saying that it'll hold on to 300 pixels worth of data. So that if your game were to whatever reason uh, go back down a little bit, say you made that a pass through, and the game backed up some, then um, then it's going to save that into memory. So it's you, you'll use it, but uh, just take the defaults for now. So and I'm taking the defaults for everything for now. Uh, if we change even one little thing on here, you can see it changes uh, the preset to custom. So if I want to get all my default settings back, I just change it back to to that. <coughs> Back to the preset of wins. All right, so that's it for now. Um, I need to make some graphics so we can actually see what's going on in here, and I don't have any right now. Like I said, this is all shooting from the hip. So we're going to create a new fireworks document. We'll take 100, 
100, 120. Um, we'll go ahead and make it black background because I want to make a white object. I like white. Don't ask me why. Why not just do that? So now we got a uh, black canvas uh, background and we'll just, uh, I'm going to make a ball, I don't know, I guess a, a round character. So we'll use the ellipse tool, hold down the shift button. This isn't a tutorial on how to use uh, fireworks, but it's my one of my favorite programs to use for graphics editing. I've been using it for years and I just, I don't know, I like it. Uh, for those that are interested, I'm using CS5, fireworks CS5. Um, I think I'm gonna make some kind of a glowing orb type game, something. So I'm gonna give it a glow, I guess. Uh, let's see, where's glow at? Uh, right there, glow, and we'll make that white. And let's see, I don't want to, I don't want it to be that hard edge. I want to have a soft edge on it. So we'll go eight. And let's see, increase the. There you go. That's doing it. Eight, eight offset now so now you can't really see where the end of the circle ends and the glow starts so that's perfect is it kind of that glow look uh, let's see 30 is probably good for the size maybe 25 yeah 25 by 25 that's a good size character ball with the glow coming out of it and that's probably well we can go to our canvas we can say fit canvas and it comes out to being let's see 49 by 49 good enough Okay, and uh, then we'll take the canvas to clear. So it makes the background transparent. We will save this and we'll go to this PC. I haven't saved anything in this directory in a while. So R, let's see, no, we'll go to games. Uh, let's see, we'll make a new folder for this. We'll call it uh, uh, no name game because no name game. Uh, we will go graphics. We'll go uh, characters. And I'm going to go ahead and make a couple more while I'm in here. We'll go backgrounds. So now I'm going to keep those. I'm going to keep uh, objects because I know I'm going to need those. I'm going to go. What's the other one? Uh, psh, psh, psh. Oh, da, da, da. Golly, the, uh, ah, actions. So I'm gonna change that again. Actions. And those will be, uh, like coins and things you can pick up. So, anyway, we'll save this into characters. We'll call it, uh, character. Let's call it care one. I have no idea. Uh, yeah, care one at PNG. That's fine. Let's create a new file, another one. So that's going to be a character. Let's make a, uh, I don't know, enemy. So we'll do 100 by 100 again. This time we'll drop another ball. Actually, I know what. We'll do this. Make it easy on ourselves. We'll go Control Copy, Control V to paste. See, this is going to be an enemy. So we'll make them a little bit bigger. We'll say 35, 35, and I don't know. We'll make them red for now bright super ridiculous red cool that will be a good enemy and then we'll fit canvas save some pixels control shift s and we'll call this we'll go up one and you know what else we need to make is enemies maybe we can do frenemies my daughter always says they're frenemies uh, we'll call this enemy one maybe that'd be a name for a game frenemies I don't know how it would work. I'd have to consult my daughter. Anyway, just thinking. Okay, so now we have two, we have a character and we have an enemy. Just for the basics of this first uh, step one and for my testing, we can go over to, um, so now I'm going to try to, let's see, I need to adjust this within the bounds of my screen here. So if I want to make, um, let's see, no name game. I like using XN view, it's a better, I think it's a better viewer. So we want to add this character in first, so we bring them over here, and you can see as you drag it on here, you're going to get this little drop wheel. So you can either add it as a character, an object, a background, or an action. Right now we want to add it, a, obviously, as a character. 
So we'll drop them in there as a character. So we'll come back over to this. First thing we need to do, go to the collision editor. And in this cool little collision shape editor, you can go from, this is one of the things I really like about BuildBox is the collision editor. You can't do, uh, some things you can't do, you can't, for instance, do a polygon that uh, is inverted, I guess would be the, yeah, uh, or concave instead of, it has to be convex. So you can't have something, as soon as you cross that little straight line, and make it concave, it says nope, it has to be convex. But circles are different, they're easy, and I'm just gonna take the default on this one. So that's my collision shape. Uh, if you wanna know more about collision shapes, uh, Google it. Next, we'll go back a level, and we'll go over to our enemies. And we will add that in as a, uh, well, you can't see it, so here, let me move this over. We're gonna add this one as an object. You would think they're just be an enemies one on here but there's not so anyway uh, enemy one and we'll do the same thing for the collision shape uh, thinks everything is a polygon when you first add it but circle leave the shape right where it is take that and now we have an enemy we'll take our own character we'll put him on there and ta -da, we have a friend and an enemy and I'm just going to duplicate this out some so you hit the W key to go up, you can hit the A key to go right. Um, I'm gonna reselect this one, and you can hit the D to go, I'm sorry, I said right, that was left, this is right, and then you can hit the uh, S to go down. So again, that is uh, W, that is A, that is D, and that is S. So, we'll drag some of these around, and I'm not sure what this is, what's going to happen here, but, uh, let's see. Yeah, let's give that a shot. And to, so to test live preview, I'm going to hit play here and whoa. Okay. So there you go. I'm getting hit by stuff, but nothing's happening. Why is that? Um, easy enough. So here is a small pain in the butt with build box. So you would think that you could click and drag and select all of these guys and no, so if I want to make these guys an enemy, oh darn, I forgot to make them an enemy. So uh, I can say uh, destroy type, destroy character, and that's if it collides with a character, it destroys him. So let me try this again. And boom, I just killed the character, and I could add animations to make that a little more dramatic and put some sounds to it and whatnot, but you, you get the idea now. Now the red guy will kill him, but all these other guys, they're still, I have to go through one at a time, destroy a character destroy character. I can't even select all of these to delete them all. So one at a time, delete, 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 delete. All right. So now that it's set as destroy character, um, if I duplicate it now, yes, now it's set the way I want. It does what I want. It's uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt and it's complained about much frequently. It's also uh, reported that it's not going to be fixed in build box two, which is a major letdown for me and uh, I think a lot of other people. So anyway, that is what it is. I can keep dragging up and go up or I could create another scene. I could come over here and start, uh, let me see. I can go control copy paste, control copy, come over here say paste, control V that is. Um, and then I could make some more. And just so that we see that we're actually doing some more, I'll, I'll make some kind of a little pattern here so you can see when it goes on to the next board. We'll make two little dots next to each other. And then we'll click play again. I use the keyboard, I can go left, right. I can't go up. And there's the two little dots that uh, we talked about. And then it's just gonna keep repeating beyond that. So, I don't know if you, actually that was off the screen, I believe. No, you saw it. So I'm gonna pull this down some, pull this up some so you can see the whole screen that I'm looking at here. Restart. You can go left, you can go right, you can go, you can't go up and you can't go down. Now it looks like we just got a bunch of blurry red and white balls right now, but this is the game as we have it. And if I hit one of these, boom. All right, so I wanna be able to move uh, up and down. We'll get to that in the next tutorial. For now, that is a start. We have a friend, we have a bad guy. And uh, yeah, so there you go. I'm gonna cut this off before I hit the 15 minute mark and uh, go ahead and get it uploaded and start the next one. Thanks.